I'm Chris from Government TV. I'm here with Tom from Boss & Co. Hi Chris, how you doing? Not too bad, how are you? Yeah, so, very well, I understand you're one of the finishers. Um, I am, yes. So yeah. what is it that your job actually entails? Well, mostly is at the end we, we kind of make the gun nice, ready for the customers. We test shoot it a lot. We okay. all the wood, we yeah. cut the checkering. But really finishing is about making all the fine little details that make a custom gun, so making sure the safety feels nice, yeah. um, all, the, all the tiny pieces. But we deal with it in all stages. We polish it for engraving, okay. uh, we polish it up before hardening, and we regulate it after the hardening. Um, so we, yeah, we work, work with all angles, really. It's a nice department to be in, because you do a, do a bit of everything. Yeah, so is this good. proper case hardening? Then that's done it is, yeah. It's done in Birmingham by a company called Race and Ledger. Yeah. It's everybody. They do, they do everybody's and yeah. they do Purdy's and Holland's and Holland's yeah. um, and it's the more traditional finish basically. Yeah, exactly. um, it's it's more simple, um, but that's how they always used to be hundred plus years ago. Yeah. So what what finish do we have on the stuff here? Uh, it's it's our own sort of mix. It's basically mainly used of true oil okay. and it comes up to a very glossy finish and yeah. it goes very very hard. Okay. Um, so it protects the wood quite well. It's very durable and if it gets any dents and any scratches, it's very easy and relatively quick to repair. We can okay. turn. Turn something around within a week or so. Okay, so it's uh, easy to get those dents and yeah, scratches out. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, a lot of finishes. If you had a scratch, you'd have to strip the entire stock, no, it's okay. take the dents out, and then refinish the entire thing, which could potentially take months. Okay. Whereas we can turn it around in in a couple of days or a week or so, maybe okay. two weeks at worst. Okay. And the, the barrels are they all hand built? They are. Yes, yeah. so they come in as, in as just a straight tube, and yeah. then the barrel maker he'll he'll mill those out. He'll join them together, sort of bind them up, and put them in a forge and create a pair of tubes but they're all filed up by hand um, to the wall thickness and the shape. Okay so do you think it's do you think making barrels by hand is better than say CNC cutting? Um, it's it's definitely unique because yeah. put it that way this is a pair of guns and you couldn't take one barrel from one gun and fit it on the other they Why wouldn't okay? fit okay. Uh, every part is fitted individually even to the fore end they yeah. won't fit on each gun but they will have the same overall weight uh, okay. same length you know they're pretty much identical okay but just uh, what is it you like about boss and co guns um the fact that i do you know something for a living that i love i'm a, I'm a shooter myself yeah. so i can appreciate yeah, uh, quite what they are and i do a lot of the repairs so i'll never be able to afford one but yeah. i get to test no, shoot them do one, then. <laughs> unfortunately not no i did joke with the boss today do we get one when we finish our friendship but yeah. he didn't take that no. not too too funny but um no it's, it's as good as owning one working with them every yeah, day because i get to clean them i service them do the reports okay. it's yeah, it's a good good variety. And how is it? How is someone, uh, you know, a youngster, able to get into a gunsmithing? Good, good question. I mean, a lot of the time with some of the big companies, not not always so easy. It's generally a, a job for life. So our barrel maker has been there 37 years. Um, he started from I think 16, and he's and he's still there now. Um, a lot of the time, it's you can only get in if someone dies, leaves, or retires. But a lot of the companies like Holland and Holland are, are pushing to get new blood in. Um, a lot of the workers have been there quite a long time, and no one works forever. And they opened up a training school. Okay. and they're taking people on. Um, one of my friends has just started there in September. Okay. Um, so hopefully they'll, they'll go up through the ranks quite quickly. He's soon to be positioned in one of the departments, um, in one of the machining shops maybe, okay. maybe as an actioner or a stocker, we don't, don't know yet. Okay. Uh, and then hopefully they'll get a load of new fresh people um, September this year, you know, so hopefully get the, more. that's the Boston Co. training centre then? Well, that, that's what they, other companies do. We, we don't. I was okay. lucky to find the job. Um, yeah. It was to do with my boss, Arthur, who's quite new to the company, yeah. and he, it was his decision to get uh, apprentices in. So there's about six okay. of us, okay. um, and I was lucky to find the advert in, in a paper. Someone posted it online, and just through chance, I found it chance in the right really. place at the right well, time. landed the right place. And That's really. it. <laughs> but the best thing to do is just you know apply for the companies, just keep keep sending in CV, asking what positions are available, yeah. and you might you might be lucky that someone leaves at the right time, and Perfect. then you're in. Perfect. So, well, do you like making the rifles or the shotguns? What's your favourite? Um, well, we mostly do shotguns. We do do some double rifles, yeah. a lot less of, so I've not had a chance to work on those yet. Okay. Um, but shotguns, I'd probably say I enjoy more, because as a shoot I, I can understand them, and I relate to them yeah. a lot, lot easier, yeah. um, especially in the normal sort of calibres, like 12, 20, um, 28, 16, things like that. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, well, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, and thank you very much. That's all right, no cool. problem. Cheers, cheers, cheers Thanks very much.